If you know anything about Genghis Khan, then you know that he was kind of an intense guy. Actually, intense is an understatement. He was pretty ruthless. He did some messed up things, and he made his army join him in doing said messed up things, and today we're gonna talk about it, so let's get to counting down the top 10 messed up things in the life of Genghis Khan's army. At number 10, Silver Eyes. After learning a little bit about Genghis Khan, I'm starting to catch on to this my way or the highway kind of attitude he had. Khan didn't like it when people would go against his orders, and he did not give second chances to people. If you wronged him, he would end you. Simple as that. One of the more gruesome examples from Khan's past comes from when he tried to set up a trade route with a leader of a large city. Genghis sent 500 troops to start this trade route, but the city leader had the whole caravan that Genghis sent completely wiped out. Now as I mentioned before, Genghis Khan has a my way or the highway kind of attitude and if someone went against him, there would be hell to pay and boy oh boy, was there hell to pay for this one. In retaliation, Genghis and his troops went to pay this city leader a visit and ended up killing the entire civilian population of the area. Of course, he had to save the best for last and killed the city leader by having his troops pour molten silver into the leader's eyes. That's pretty messed up not only to carry out that order, but also watch something as horrendous as that happen right before your eyes. At number 9, Noble Blood. Even though Genghis Khan was this big, scary, ruthless killing machine, he still had rules that he liked to follow. One of those rules he established for himself and his army was a rule that prohibited noble blood from being shed. This meant that when Genghis and his army conquered a new place, they would kill anyone but they wouldn't slash, stab, or maim the nobility who lived there. But just because their blood wasn't spilled doesn't mean that they didn't get to face harsh consequences. Instead, Khan's army had to come up with new creative ways of ending the lives of the nobility without bloodshed. If a nobleman was lucky, then they would have just had their necks snapped, but this method of execution was quite rare. The army did however find enjoyment out of suffocating their victim to death. Imagine having to come up with an appropriate method of ending someone in just a few seconds. Before we carry on talking about the wild things that Genghis Khan made his army do, why not leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Death Toll. When you think of Genghis Khan and his spree of violence and chaos, you might think to yourself, yeah, he killed a lot of people, but you never really realize just how many lives Genghis and his army took until you really put it into perspective. Let me compare the destruction that Genghis and his army caused to another historical figure who was responsible for the deaths of a lot of people, Joseph Stalin. This man was responsible for the deaths of over 20 million people, making him single-handedly more brutal than the German soldiers from World War II. But if you think that's bad, then think again, because Genghis Khan was much, much worse. Genghis and his army were responsible for an estimated 40 million deaths. They wiped out entire cities in some of the most brutal ways you could think of. Now that's pretty messed up. Imagine being a member of Khan's army and having to basically kill anyone in sight. Can't get any more messed up than that, right? Well, maybe it can, but you'll just have to keep watching to find out. At number 7, Skilled Archer. Genghis Khan wanted as many people to fight for him as possible. I mean, the guy's army was huge, and as I mentioned previously, he left a lot of destruction in his wake. When he conquered a new place, he gave some people the option of joining his army or facing the consequences, but he also liked to hire people for the unique skills. That's how one of his enemies turned into one of Khan's best archers for his army. While in battle, Khan encountered an incredibly skilled archer from an enemy clan. This archer saw Khan on the battlefield and instead of being afraid of him, he was obsessed. He was Genghis Khan's biggest fan, although he did almost kill Khan with his arrow. The Mongols sent the enemy clan running for the hills except for the archer who bravely marched into the Mongol camp and asked to speak to the Khan. He then explained that he was the archer who nearly shot him and that he was willing to pay for his crime with his life, though he also added that if the Khan were to spare him, he would become his lifelong servant and join his army. Now I don't know what kind of brainwashing had to have happened for this archer to willingly join Khan's army, but either way, it's a little messed up. At number six, body shields. When in battle, one of the most important things to have is protection. Armor, weapons, and shields are necessities when fighting opposing forces, but you know Genghis had to go and make this concept weird. As Genghis and the Mongols entered battle after battle and conquered city after city, they would often take the opposing clan soldiers as prisoners. These prisoners didn't just sit around in holding cells though, they were put to good use. These captured soldiers would join the battle with the Mongols and were often used as human shields. 
The prisoners would be told to fight their best on the battlefield, and if they succeeded and survived, and the Khan deemed them worthy, they would be able to join the Mongol army. Now I don't know what's more messed up, the fact that the Mongols were just okay with having literal human shields, or the fact that the prisoners would go through with this brutality in order to join the Khan's army. I guess it just comes down to survival, but what do you guys think? At number 5, Family Affair for a long time, and sometimes even still today, marriages were used as a means to seize power and status. Genghis knew this could work in his family's favor, and so he came up with a strategy to seize power by using his own children. Genghis was known to marry off his daughters to the kings of his own allies, but it was a complex plan. In order to have the privilege of marrying one of the Khan's daughters, the king would first have to cast aside all of his other wives to make sure that his daughter was the only one. Not because he wanted his daughter to be in a completely monogamous marriage, but so that there was no other competition. The kings would then be sent into battle, and since almost everyone would die in battle, the power of the throne would be carried over to the king's wife, in this case being a daughter of Genghis Khan. This strategy worked so well that by the time Genghis died, his daughters ruled an area stretching from China's Yellow Sea to Iran's Caspian Sea. At number 4, Pure Vengeance Just to give you guys an idea as to how ruthless Genghis Khan and the Mongol army were, let's talk about that one time they killed 1.7 million people just to avenge one person. We just talked about how the Khan would marry off his daughters to secure power, but that doesn't necessarily mean there was no love in the marriage. One of Genghis' daughters really loved her husband, and when he was killed by an archer, she was devastated. Genghis actually really liked his son-in-law as well, so they were both shaken by his tragedy death, and they swore vengeance on the person who killed him. Genghis Khan and his army traveled to the place where the archer who killed Khan's son-in-law lived, and they wreaked havoc on every person there. The Mongols killed every person in that city. It is estimated that the death toll was around 1,748,000 people. By request of the Khan's broken-hearted daughter, every man, woman, child, and even animal was killed, beheaded, and their skulls were placed into pyramids to make sure that not a single person got away with just a simple wound. She really said full send or no send. At number 3, Victory Feast I think it might be safe to say that the Mongols were sore winners. They really rubbed it in their enemies' faces that they had lost and that Genghis was victorious. One of the best examples of the Mongol army taking their victory a little too far comes from when they defeated the Russians in the Battle of the Kalka River in 1223. After Genghis and his troops were victorious in their battle, they decided to hold a celebratory feast. The Mongols forced the captured Russian nobility to lie down on the ground, then a heavy wooden gate was thrown on top of them, then the tables and chairs were set up on top of them, and the Mongols sat down to a feast all while slowly crushing the Russians to death under the weight of their celebratory shindig. I mean, I can only imagine the painful screams that would have echoed through the party atmosphere as the troops sat down to their meal. It must have been a horrifying experience, or maybe their screams were like their version of a Spotify dinner playlist. At number 2, Erased from History as I've mentioned before, Genghis didn't like taking no for an answer, and just to show how displeased he was about not getting his way, things were known to get quite violent. Genghis once staged an attack, and when defeated, he asked the Zizia kingdom to send him troops, as if he was entitled to that, right? Anyways, when they refused, Genghis got really mad and sent his army to attack, giving orders to literally kill and destroy everything. The Mongol army said, okay bet, and destroyed everything that belonged to the kingdom, and systematically wiped out every member of the kingdom's population. At the end of it all, the Zizia kingdom was literally erased from history. They didn't write down their own stories, so the only reason why historians know of their existence was from records of other kingdoms. It wasn't until 700 years later that their language was rediscovered, when in the 20th century, archaeologists found stones with their writing on them. Even though Genghis Khan died during this battle, the Mongols were so dedicated to their leader and the cause that they carried on their mission without him, killing every person in the kingdom even after their kingdom's leader had fallen and their enemy had surrendered. And finally at number 1, Buried Secrets The Mongols, though a large army, were very good at keeping secrets because after the Khan died, they never revealed where their leader's final resting place was. It was Genghis Khan's wish to be buried in a place where no one would be able to find him, and so to honor his wishes, the Mongol slaves took Genghis' body into the wilderness and buried him in an unknown location. To make sure that there was no way for them to share the location of Genghis' body, the Mongol army killed the slaves who buried their leader and threw them into the grave. They then planted trees on top of the grave to make 
make sure that it blended in with the wilderness. But just to add insult to injury, when those troops made it back to the camp, they were also killed so that the secret of where everyone was buried really remained a secret. It's kind of messed up that these troops killed each other just to keep a secret, but clearly it worked because to this day, no one knows where Genghis Khan was buried. Before we wrap things up for today, I want you guys to leave me a comment down below telling me what you thought was the most messed up thing from this list. Genghis Khan and his army were all kinds of messed up, so tell me what surprised you the most about them down in the comments. Anyways, that's it for me. I've been your host, B Room, and until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and stay sweet, bumblebees. And it is estimated that the death toll was around 1,746,000. Nope, that's 48. That's 48. Let's try that one more time. Numbers? No. <laughs>